This is his first Insta Live. Wow, He's Elfie, you're doing great. <laughs> I want Alfie to meet Julieta. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Alfie, stick around for a second. Oh my God. Did you say their name is Julieta? Yes, she's named oh. after Juliet <laughs> of Romeo and Juliet. But how did you name Alfie? Um, so Alfie has a brother named Simon and we just sort of looked at them and went okay he's an Alfie and he's a Simon like there wasn't much to it it was like their names just kind of sprung to us and they grow into their names every day it's a it's a really beautiful experience (laughs) watching them grow (laughs) my my cat the name of my cat took a long time it was many debates with my girlfriend at the time I really wanted to name her something super obscure like cat yeah. Second. And it was a fight. And I'm so glad that she fought me to give her a more beautiful human-esque name because she's a real princess. Julieta is a beautiful name. I was very much the same. Like, I wanted to name them, like, obscure names like Martini or Iris Murdoch or, like, something ridiculous. <laughs> but it yeah. just, I just was like, okay, Alfie and Simon. <laughs> yeah, they presented their spirits to you. I, they really do that. Yeah. yeah. It was personal form of art and it's very confessional and um oftentimes quite moody I am quite a moody person naturally and I'd say it's like (laughs) somewhere between Joni Mitchell and I don't know Bon Eva or Billie Eilish or something like that (laughs) thrilled to hear it I've heard from an inside source that it is amazing Thank you. And likewise, I just adore your music and your voice is just like utterly magical. So I'm like really delighted to be chatting today. Thank you so much. Well, let's freaking collab. Who cares? Love to make I would love that. <laughs> okay, great. great. Well, <laughs> should we get into these awesome questions? Yes. Okay. Who is your favorite historical female figure without, I mean, I feel like it's obvious. You got to say who you are as one of them. <sighs> Yes, obviously Susan Gilbert and Emily Dickinson, of course. Um, But when I saw that you were going to be asking me that question, I was like, well, I mean, can you answer that question? There are so many spectacular women through history that I'm like, ah! Um, I guess I would say all of the suffragettes. The suffragettes as a movement, I'm just like, yes, yes, you you are my historical female figures. Um, Love that. Yeah. So I think I'd go with them. Also, I love, like, questions obviously are just a a starting place. Feel free to break all the rules and answer whatever you want. (laughs) You can can list off a hundred of your favorite people if that's your vibe. Great. It's so, so, so hard to choose. Um, I put myself through all these questions with Coco, the head of Lady Gun, before I did this interview because it's Mm -hmm. horrible to do anything to anyone you haven't done to yourself. And um, yeah, I also I'd say that's a very people. good motto for life. Do do unto yourself before you do unto others. Yeah, you have to know what it feels like. You know, it gives you a lot of perspective. So that's a great answer. Um, what is one challenge you've had to overcome in your industry? Um, so I think I think for me, I especially as a younger teen, because I, I started acting when I was pretty young. Um, especially with teenagers I think people are really keen in the industry to sort of put you in a box and go this is what you do Mm -hmm. um and uh I think as women like we are so much more multifaceted than people would often have us be um and it took me it took me a while to really like grow a pair of tits and be like no 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 I'm not just gonna act I'm gonna do music as well because these are both my passions I care about them equally um And also just to not like clean myself up and like present an easy person to people because I feel like I did a lot of that through my teens as well of just uh, trying to be as digestible for people as possible as opposed to just like being messy and myself. Um, And I'm really, really enjoying uh, feeling a little bit freer now. I love that. It takes mm-hmm. getting to share some of who you are to as like a jumping point, you know, to, yeah. in order to expand on that. Like, I feel like even within acting, before you introduce music, it's 
so encouraged to slot yourself as whatever people see you as. Like actually yeah. one of the most helpful acting exercises I did really early on, totally resented it. But it was like the whole class gives you feedback on what they see about you. And usually it's upsetting because you're like, but I'm like really <laughs> smart and complicated. And I'm actually like really strong. And they're like, you're bubbly and easy. And you're like, yeah, you're yeah. But it can also like be such a um, useful tool to figure out how you get like those first roles. And then you get to expand on it. And it's in a way, sometimes I feel like it's a luxury to be messy in work. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and also I, I kind of mean going into auditions and outside of work, like uh, in, in press opportunities as well. Like I, uh, when I first started doing press, I, ju I just wanted to look like, like a perfect little actress. <laughs> Yeah, I <laughs> and I recently chopped my hair off and I'm looking how I've always wanted to look and I just feel so em empowered in that. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I have to say, I watched some of your interviews, like just to get a sense of your personhood when you talk. And um, I noticed that you cut your hair off and I feel like you look even more like an iconic actor. Oh, classic. You look like an thank you. actor now. Like you're stunning. It was a strong actor move. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> okay. What, name a woman who has had a big influence on you. I mean, I imagine that so many people you interview are going to say this, but like just definitely my mom. Um, my mom is an artist and um, was like super supportive of me and my brothers from like early, early childhood in whatever we wanted to pursue and especially as artists and anything we brought to her and showed her was never kind of diminished as child art. It, it was like given the respect and love and teaching uh, that, that an, an adult would give to uh, a student. <laughs> um, so my mom is just an incredible, incredible life coach and person to have in my life. And she also taught me to act. Um, so wow. I, yeah. Yeah. Because my mom was an actress. Um, oh, incredible. That is so, so 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 lucky I am I am like intensely lucky with both my parents that they are like so supportive and nourishing of me and my brothers as artists and as yeah. people the, the world is like it's hard to wrap your fingers around and especially if you don't come from a family who has any like resource for how it's gonna be it can be so scary like yeah to not end up just being like objectified in ways you don't want to be objectified or whatever. It's really nice to have someone who can be a mentor, whether they're your family or not in this industry so that you can be a grounded person. And that always comes through in the art that you make. Yeah, I, I have such admiration for my friends who come from families where there has been no support for their art and, and just like families that just don't get it at all because like that takes such courage. And I mean, there are people outside there can be people outside of family that that can be that mentor but I do feel like super lucky to that my parents are that for me yeah and I feel like almost even more so than having any information about how to succeed in the arts what you mentioned before that just like validating your instincts as an artist is so so, yeah. so valuable so like, valuable believing that like when you draw a doodle it's like yeah you can do it because that's oh, all yeah the arts take is like taking what you make seriously I think absolutely so cool okay um speaking of stuff like validation and words mm -hmm. best advice you've ever received or advice you'd give to your younger self or your life's motto any of those things like oh wow <laughs> I, I know I lump them all together because I feel like they all kind of evoke something different for me but wrap up the same so you can answer however you want okay um so I guess the advice I would give to my younger self uh, is to have fun. I, um, it sounds like really basic, but uh, uh, I grew up acting and, and pursuing my passions. And I think I was so wrapped up as a teenager in wanting to succeed and do everything well, that I didn't, I didn't give myself much room to... Uh, play and enjoy uh my experiences and, and my travels for the work that I was doing like I didn't really let myself like go out at night and enjoy the places I was in and, and when I moved to New York that really changed um and I started like 
while shooting Dickinson, really embracing the city and making music at night and going out for wine with friends. And like that, that so like nourishes the art that yes. you make as an artist as well. Like just allowing yourself to have fun and not take things too seriously has taken me a while to learn. So I would, I would definitely love to go back and tell my younger self to just like chill out a bit. <laughs> yeah, have some life and experiences because they're going to come through in your art. Yeah. Did you have any like hobbies as a young person? Uh, besides very, like, working creative perfectionist focused. I definitely like my hobby was like playing music in the evening. Like if my parents <laughs> yeah. were cooking dinner, I was like playing the piano and on break times, I was like hiding from the kids in my school in the music department, writing songs. Um, <laughs> that. that is the making of a star that said my parents have dogs and uh, walking my dog was a huge hobby just like conversations with my dog oh dog I totally walks. talked to my dog as well I used to read poetry to my dog you used to read po what poetry well my the favorite one I always said this one to my dog at the beach whose name was Butch which is hilarious because my mom came out as gay when I was little and named the dog Butch before she was <laughs> Um, and actually, he had my exact same hair texture. He was a very fun little creature. That's um, incredible. But I think this is from, like, Alice in Wonderland or something. But the time has come, the walrus said, to speak of many things. And shoes and ships and sealing wax, cabbages and kings, watch the sea and boiling hat, and whether pigs have wings. I used to say that to my dog all the time. I don't know why. That is, I mean, just glorious. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a very good listener. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with that um but no I think connecting with animals and finding your like introverted step away moments that's real time for imagination I also like I grew up in the most rural place like i 40 minutes away from the nearest town so my dog really was my best friend at many points and I I did spend a lot of time isolated so I was like super grateful for my animals in that respect I love that. Where can I ask where you grew up? Yeah, uh, I grew up in the southwest of England uh, in a county called Devon on mm. Exmoor, which is like very high and beautiful rolling hills near oh, the sea. Amazing. So I, I surfed in the summer times, but like in a full like wetsuit, freezing yeah. cold, like pneumonia at the end of the uh, I <laughs> surf. I grew up in Oregon, which I feel like is sort of like the England of America. It's like really moody beaches and like also meadows and amazing well. okay so very similar for a super super serious question uh salty or sweet this is my favorite question of of the group uh i have the biggest <laughs> sweet tooth ever like uh, i'm just completely obsessed my uh my partner cooks he's a great cook um and um he then watches me baking and like eating sweets and is like wait watching your love for baking shows me actually how much I don't care about food in contrast like <laughs> you re I really 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 care about sweets they're a huge you know, huge part is it of my the process day. of making them or is it the process of eating them or both together I like both honestly I love baking I love following a recipe whereas okay. I I can't like cook from scratch but I really can follow a recipe but I also just my day revolves around what sweets I'm gonna eat that day and it starts with pancakes and it ends with cake and just oh god I have to tell you my fans here know that this question is a trap I hate oh. sweets and okay. everything is making me sick to my stomach but I also really respect our differences yin and yang you know we need both <laughs> in the world to, to create balance also <laughs> Also, I have to say that a favorite for me is like pancakes with bacon and yes, maple syrup. Yes, a savory sweet mixture. I can yeah. appreciate it. I can't appreciate it. Um, well, thank you for that. Oh, and you said your favorite sweet is what? I can't answer that. I refuse to answer. It would favorite be a children. betrayal of all the other sweets. <laughs> Got it. I respect that too. Um, what makes you feel empowered, strong, and confident? Um, I'd say being around my close friends, like watching a lot of my friends are artists, like most of my best girlfriends are actresses and musicians and watching them work and succeed and the conversations we have to like bolster each other on the days that are harder. Um, that's what empowers me the most, like just, just being around my favorite people. 
That's amazing. That's so real. The people you choose to be close to can ground you so much. Yeah, yeah. And also the wrong people can make you feel wacko. So you have to be so careful about who you choose to be close to. Massively. I actually, when I was thinking about how I would answer that um, uh, advice to your younger self, another thought was like, just don't take shit and like, mm -hmm. don't treat you badly. Um, which took me a while to learn. And I certainly feel the opposite now of just, but I have really, really glorious people in my life that empower me and make me feel able to be all of the messy, happy sides of myself. Amazing. Which I'm very grateful for. Yeah, yeah, it definitely takes work to curate that, you know? It's not, you don't like wake up. Yeah. With you have to get good at creating space between people who aren't awesome to you and also like taking yourself out of your comfort zone to find people who are. Yeah. What is your most prized possession? Um, the piano in my childhood home that I grew up playing. It's a Amazing. white, upright piano. And I spent so, so, so many hours at that piano. Um, and I wish I could like click my fingers and have it here. Um, so yeah, that piano. It is so hard to travel a piano. It's so hard. It's the, kind of one of the things that sucks about piano being like my first language of an instrument that, that it's just really difficult. Yeah, to it's never the same them. on a keyboard. It's not the same. It's, yes, it's really not. The, uh, do you play instruments? I, I, I'm learning very okay. slowly. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, because I've, I've attempted to pick up the guitar since, since traveling and working a lot, but it's just, it doesn't give the me the same. Feeling. No, I definitely yeah. can, like, in learning, I feel like I, everybody encouraged me to learn piano, and I'm just, in all my music, I just respond to guitar a lot more, because my first collaborators were these really incredible guitarists, I love the warmth of guitar, and it feels like such an intense learning curve to get good at it, with the calluses and those wicked, weird shapes. <gasps> I hate but, it. <laughs> yeah, but I think I love it, so I'm trying to get used to that guitar situation. But yeah, Amazing. big difference. I'm Amazing. the same. I, I have I have mine just like right here, and I'll just like poodle about on it all day long. And yet, still, I think I only know about four chords and cannot do a bar chord, however much I no, try. No, it's so hard. Also, I like kind of have little, very square hands. And I'm, I'm the same for me, but I just love it more than I love the piano, and it's not okay. just a masochist. I don't know um what oh and actually because I actually didn't think of anything so big so I want to amend that question also to what would you take out of your house if you if it was on fire because I literally had a dream last night oh. that my house was on fire and had to run out with something so if you can't carry a piano what would you take um my books not all of my books but um my my dad just like started me off young with this obsession of collecting um make special editions of books and first editions and in the last couple of years uh it's something I treat myself to when I book a job is uh, getting a first edition of a favorite book um, oh I love that yeah so just some some of those special editions I would like <laughs> carry <laughs> out heavy heavy books yeah well other people are like bringing their one necklace you're like <laughs> I got this running from the fire my books <laughs> and my notebooks fuck the idea of my notebooks being burnt down in a fire literally it like bruises me emotionally. I hear that. Yeah, I hear that. Um, what is one thing everyone could do to make the world a better place? Recycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Recycle, <laughs> reduce, reuse, recycle. Think about your impact on the planet. You guys yeah. have heard of it. Recycle. Do it. Yeah, do it not so hard it's really not it's okay. got to be a little bit organized but you know i i tried to be really supportive of the recycling movement and buy myself a um yeah or buy Just... jeans you can wear for your whole life jeans waste a shit ton of water yeah hang out in vintage stores because yes. the shoppers are hot and uh so are the clothes yeah and they usually play great music yes they usually play great music. So many reasons to hang out in vintage stores. Yeah, loiter. If you learn nothing else today, go loiter in vintage stores. Yeah, um, you'll learn we're... so much. <laughs> yeah. We're here to educate. Um, we're, we've made it to the final question, oh my God. which feels so quick. This has been so fun and easy. Um, what is the best thing? It's a hard question. I think it's horrible to answer, but I hope that you can have fun with it. What is the best thing about being you? 
one second. This is the best thing about being me. Yeah. <laughs> Having cats. This one does not like to be held. Like, he's like, no, please no. <laughs> Poppy is like, you have to pay a lot more for me to be on screen. Like, I call it a union. <laughs> that one is Simon. Alfie's a little bit more chill about being picked up. But Simon's like, no, 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 thank you, no. Um, Simon's very far away right now. Yeah, Huli Cat's kind of like a big furry slinky. She's like, uh, I can always pick her up for a moment, and then she's over it. Yeah, yeah, that's like Simon. But yeah, I would say... um. My cats do make being me just like 1,000 times better. Um, I have become a cat lady since getting these cats. That. And I, I had mean, no they idea. Your independence. Hmm? You didn't know? They respect your independence is what I was saying, but they didn't yes, know they you, do. you were going to be a cat lady? No, I really, really didn't. I, I, I mean, we had cats growing up, but I grew up on a farm, so they were kind of outdoor cats, and I didn't have much of a relationship with them. And I kind of thought I was a dog person. Still love dogs, but I am like intensely a cat person and, and so appreciate all of the cat memes that my fans have been sending me to, sending to me recently. <laughs> I don't yes, know if like, you watched if you... the last episode of Dickinson. My character has a particularly intense and very emotional conversation with Emily. And it's remarkable uh, the similarities between my face when I'm sad and cats. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a strong way that fans can show love and support of us as actors and artists is to compare us to cats. We love that. It's incredible. That. Watchers, please just keep sending me memes of cats because it brings me so much joy. I even enjoy receiving pictures of just people's cats. Like, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> me too. Or like, I have an air filter for the song I just put out and sometimes people send me their cats in the filter and that makes yes. me so happy like yes your cat is a, a god i want your cat to be the ambassador yes. for my whole brand <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible i love that and i pushed soko the other day to go beyond because i feel like it's easy to be like the best thing about me is other people but in the spirit of self-celebrating is there mm. something that's physical on your body that you carry around every day that you love about yourself um oh my oh god it's uh, yeah especially as an english person i feel like self-deprecation is like such like it's so like ingrained right. that i'm like i don't know how to Come on, answer not to this. Like an eyebrow hair or like a knee i have to say i fucking love you. being a woman yeah i love i i love my body i and i feel really lucky in that like i actually love my body um and and, and feel kind of proud of it and strong in it hell um, yeah so I yeah, I guess. I, I guess love that. to hear that. Thank you for doing that. I know it's, it's totally uncomfortable and weird, but everyone <laughs> should like give themselves a little compliment every day because words go a long way. You're so right. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that we can actually collaborate, make some music, or I just would have like that. a Zoom cat play date sometime soon. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> and I congratulations mean, on everything that you're doing. It's important. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you too. This was so wonderful. You are amazing. Thank you. Ditto. Go have <laughs> the best day ever. Thank you. And you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody bye. say bye. Go follow Ella Hunt. Bye, people. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Though. Oh, leave? It's the weirdest.